All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. It seemed like a simple day in the markets. We didn't move much at all, but man, the tension is in the air. After the last week mega rally, you woke up with analysts and everybody alike asking, is this going to maintain? Is Powell going to murder it this week? And ultimately, is this a bear market rally or will we actually see a end of the year rally? So we were talking about this yesterday. Remember, there's a lot of good seasonality for November and December. But don't forget, October had good seasonality as well, too. And people are bringing this up. Even Michael Wilson, Bank of America, he said this morning that he thinks that this is simply just a bear market rally and that you shouldn't get too excited and he's Morgan Stanley I said Bank of America I think they bought them out but either way it's the theme of the week now people were asking on stream what is the main event it seems like every week kind of has a big focus and this week it is boiling down to Jerome Powell and his follow-up speech he's going to be doing as well as the other Fed speakers we'll go over the rest of the calendar but finally the only other thing I would point out which explains some of today and you should watch out for this week it is whether or not the bond volatility returns just like the markets rallied, so did the bonds last week. So if you watch the rates come back up, TLT, IEF comes down, that will be a problem again, or it may not be a problem, and we'll talk about that. So Chad, I got a recap for you. I got a couple of news updates, and then I have a couple of plays for you. So drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open, youtube.com slash the stock market. We will see you there in the morning, baby. It's free 99. Run it. Walking to the top, it's the twins on the left. Live in the hills, but still get a spread. Started with a little, but it's still reinvested. Fear how I fear, do you feel less blessed? I just want the lesson. I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if he waits for perfection. I think it's to the uh, down. Yeah. Ball right off the bat. I hope you guys are understanding the main theme of this week. Setting up and coming into all of it. You got a big portion of the market that believes this rally is going to open the floodgates into the end of the year and you already have people saying this is a bear market rally even what we saw today you watch the bonds give up everything like we've been talking about they have already came back down to their non-farms level and this is just after one day so equities might be able to stay up bonds are going to do their own thing and now for the rest of the week this is what we are going to be dealing with and juggling as we get the Fed speakers. So the way I'm breaking it down, will the other Fed speakers have an effect? I'm sure that they will. Even right now, after hours, Neil Kishkari, he's saying he's not convinced that rate hikes are over. That sounds a little different than what you heard from him not too long ago. Let's see if the futures reacted to that. I think they're just opening up down a little bit, but we even got to hear from, uh, I believe, Lisa Cook this morning. She had some things, and it sounded pretty hawkish. She even said she's not sure if the markets heard what she heard and the fact that they went up after Powell said some hawkish things, but in general, it's all coming down to Powell and he's going to be the checkpoint and really green light whether or not this is going to be the rally for the end of the year, or at least you could hold up some optimism. So as far as what we're getting into tomorrow, before I go any deeper on that, I just want you to know you are going to get a little bit of data. There's the balance of trade an hour before the bell here at 830. I switched this to Eastern time to make it easy for everybody, but this might be able to move the bonds but like I'm saying if they kind of do their own thing I think that will be way more important so watch out for that but that's the first big thing but then you are going to be getting a lot of fed speakers and like I was just talking about we heard from a voter today and why I'm saying it might be important because all of the people speaking tomorrow Jefferson it says Jeffries I think it's Jefferson Waller and then Williams they are all voters so this is going to be the first big thing that we got to look for as far as just general momentum and people liking, feeling, not feeling the rally. But then after you get over all of that in the Fed speakers we begin the bond auctions once again. So 1 p.m. Eastern, you get the three-year note auction, and this is 
kind of like a two-year auction. It should be more tied to policy. We shouldn't get anything too crazy on this, but don't forget, last week was a mix of dodging bullets, reacting to data, data coming in better than expected. Some of that data that helped this run-up was that Treasury refunding news, and now this week, we are actually going to see that action in the auction. So depending on how those rates come in, if people are still buying or not, we'll see what happens. There was this little infograph that came up today, and people are saying that just into the end of the month, October 31st, you watch Treasuries all across the curve hit the most short they have ever been so they said good time or bad time we'll find out but really after these auctions let's just see if people are buying the bonds you know it's one thing to deal with the shorts that's part of that supply there but let's see if people keep rushing into them or want to buy them especially after a lot of emotions over the last couple of weeks so that's what we're going to be dealing with tomorrow the only final other thing I would want to bring up is what I'm going to bring up to you every single day and that is watch the 10-year bond. So we kept bringing this up today. I've been showing you this, and again, what I'm expecting around the 4-5, and it bounced perfectly off of that, and why today, you know, bonds moved more than equities. You got to watch out for this. So like I'm saying, if we are going to continue the next leg of the rally, if Powell's going to green light things or the market's going to work its way up here, I do expect bond rates to come down a little bit. However, here is one thing I will say. Because in this whole process of what the market's been reacting to, this rally, whether it continues or not, or it's a bear market rally, a lot of it has to do with financial conditions. Powell brought them up and the market said, oh, if he's worried about financial conditions, then we don't have anything to worry about. Therefore, loosening financial conditions, which it becomes very self-defeating. That is kind of the dilemma with the markets going up, especially ahead of Powell. If they rock it up too much and ease too much, Powell could easily just say, well, financial conditions are a little eased too much, so never mind. Now, he's kind of learned not to do that, but here's one thing I'll tell you. Imagine this scenario where bond yields stay elevated like today. Let's say the yields somehow don't go up to five, stay below 475, but they don't go lower than four five, a quarter point higher than the range I expected, and then the markets go up. Will Powell be disturbed by that? I don't know. Uh, and that's the whole thing. It kind of creates something interesting here. Remember, financial conditions are not just about the price of the stock market. It has to do with the yields, the spreads, and a couple of other factors. So depending on the yields, if they stay elevated, the spreads kind of show a more tighter financial situation. If the market goes up, how will Powell feel about that? So add that into the Fed comments and everything else. I think it's going to be an interesting week, but I'm sure by the middle of it, we'll know what's up. And then Friday with the consumer sentiment. And then before you know it, man, it's end of November. But now... Let us get into the play. So right off the bat, we talked about it yesterday. You have a ton of earnings. So I would definitely watch out for those plays. And I guess I'll start with the first one tomorrow morning. We already went over the earnings preview, but Uber. So they are expected to do very good. They've given a lot of good guidance over the year. And even though they've done good, like they've given updates and they've said, yeah, no, we keep doing good. And I'm pretty sure all of the analysts are at the top range of everything for their estimates. So they have a high bar to beat. If they beat that and smash that, that could be some very good news. So I am going to watch tomorrow to see how that one plays. So that is play number one. Watch out for them on the post earnings. I will even throw Lyft into that whole discussion because they will be a sympathy, but Lyft has moved a lot recently. I've been talking about them for parts, but I do not like the daily as of now, but it's not too bad. We'll see. But that is play number one. Watch out for that. Then play number two. This one is very interesting because... Because this one was after hours. There was news of Intel, I believe, getting like defense chips or what was it? it says Intel and in lead to get billions for secure defense chip facility. Sources say they say the defense chip facility considered for funding under the Chips Act and that even Arizona manufacturing complex, it could involve that one and they could get some money funding loans, all of that good stuff. So it reacted a little bit, had a little bit of a pop and drop about 1% higher after hours. Watch how this plays out tomorrow and maybe 
Disney. There is follow-up news for some other companies, but that is play number two. Then play number three, I'm going with Hims. They had earnings today, and they killed it, actually. They beat this quarter, then they raised on the full year. Last time I flipped it, it was around 11.50 or something. We did really good, got in, got out, and then their latest earnings have been good, but they have been selling off. So this is one of those riskier growth plays. I have been a little hesitant oh, after the last three months, but I am going to keep an eye on this one tomorrow morning and see how this one plays out. Definitely caught my eye. And then besides that, just riding everything else we've been in, haven't made too many moves. I am a little bit bullish because that's what I felt in October, but I am still aware that the bond market is in control, and I do think that will be the answer to a lot of things and pretty much Powell speaking to the bonds, moving everything. That'll do everything, but Chad... Teddy, sir, watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. Oh, and I need you to learn something. We had a lot of talks today. They asked about a philo. They asked about a lot of things, but I'll tell you, I want you to learn working from the ant. Oh, the ant has no master. Learn, learn the skills, and you need to learn to make something out of nothing. Oh, you are going to learn it. And I, I, I rebuke you claiming that you can't learn how to make something out of nothing because you will, baby. So, Chad, learn from the ant. Keep the grind up. Get ready for the end of the year, the new year, the next year, the new season, the same season. It's all... And get the long term, and I love you. Oh, yeah, I, I, we updated the long term. I'll tell you all about it. But drink that water. Stay hydrated, healthy. I'll see you in the morning. I love you. God bless you. Finger to the sky and uh, horn. <laughs>